Welcome to PGC YouTube, part to season one, workshop 2023. What do you think this bird's head feather will look like? The breast was purple, it became white. What does this tell you? Lighter, but why? Of course it's pigmentation, but why? Yes, I'm looking, I'm looking for the pheomelanin. Pheomelanin is missing, gone. This bird is this bird, but see, the back is green. The back is lighter green. Even the belly is different from there, right? We have good pictures later on to share, but this is just an example to help you think. The difference, the moment you see these two birds, you will know immediately that this bird has now technically or theoretically zero pheomelanin in his body. So his feather will be lighter. What happened to this pheomelanin? Gone. Okay. Moving on with some further examples. Now that we understood the basics of the feather and pigmentation distribution, let's look at, that, at the mutations. Effect of disappearance of some of the pigments and how it looks like on the bird. So this is a classic bird. These are all by a friend of ours called Marco. So this is a classic bird, yes? Now, the classic bird and I have a pastel bird. This is in mutation, so the feather quality is not that great. Just think of the color now, what happened? So from there, classic, I came to here. What happened? Dilute. Dilute what? Dilute means the color became less. It got di diluted, exactly. So the back became dilent, right? Sorry? Eumelanin. 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 What happened to it? Less. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. We are there. We're getting there together. Very quickly, the black, what happened to it? Exactly. So let's say 50%. Okay? So things to watch out for is the back. And then the black, which is obviously here. And then finally, I also have the, the aqua band. What happened to the aqua band? Very less. And the result of this is caused by, oh, by the way, this is the back. So this is how a classic back looks like. And this is the pastel single factor. Even if you look at the black in the tail, it became gray. So this is the result of dilution, which is the word you used. Aomelanin, which is the word you used, by theoretically 50%. The black became gray. Type. We understood this, that this is classic, and now this is green, single factor pastel. We understood that the aomelanin became reduced by 50%. Now, here I have green pastel, which is just like that, but wide breast. This was the discussion happening last night across the table and the, when we were eating, right? White breast, what happened? Pheomelanin. Pheomelanin, what happened? Gone, totally gone, right? The effect of that, this tells you that this is green now because there is little bit of pheomelanin left. You take that also away, then the back becomes yellow, right? So there you go. Same 50% aomelanin reduction gets available here, but the pheomelanin gets reduced completely, diminishes. And then, Sorry? Of course. So, so basically you got rid of that. This is why you're surviving now on the yellow, right? So what happened? You, 
So what you happened? You had blue, and you had the, uh, you had the green, you had the yellow and the blue together, right? So here, you're actually superseding. You're 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 pumping more and more yellow to the bird, less and less of the blue, less and less of the blue, not more of the blue. So the blue becomes less because of this formula, and we will see that in a moment with more pictures as well. Here, we have what? Double factor. How do I know it's a double factor? That's the most important thing to know a double factor. The aomelanin is completely gone, so as a result of that, the chin is white. If the chin is not white, it's not double factor. Okay? I need your help. Who can tell me what's A to D in color pigmentation? Arsalan. A? Classic. Why this is single factor, this is single factor? I don't understand. What is this? So you're saying C and D are double factor. Okay. Fadal. Huzaifa. This is pastel? Okay. Pastel? Pastel what? Pastel what? Okay. And this one is single factor pastel and white breast. Okay. Good job. Okay? We understand from each other and we learn from each other. This is a live example of what's happening. You guys answer. Okay? So, with the, with the, just the, on the, on the two factor or the double factor, doesn't matter whether he is white breast or purple breast because you are getting rid of the black. Okay? That's what is dominating on the back. Now let's quickly have a look at the mutations. And then maybe before, but after I finish the green, I'll start with the head, the breast and the green, and then we can take a small break. Okay, and then we will continue from there. So when it comes to mutations, I have categorized them in three domains. One is the classics, is the wild types that we all know. Two, is the officially recognized mutations. When I say officially recognized, it means NBVB or COM have registered them as acceptable mutations. It's not in my house, it's not in my club, it's not in my YouTube channel. That doesn't make it official. What is official is what is recognized by the higher authorities. And then there are ongoing mutations or mutations that are not fixed. For example, you have half cider. It cannot be inherited. A half cider father will never give half cider to his daughters or to his sons. Yes. It's one of, it's a mutation that is not fixed, not recognized. Okay, melanisk, for example, melanisk. right? Five. Exam pied, pied is there, but pied will be inherited, but it's a very, um, it's damaging the colors. This is why it is not recognized. Pied will get transferred. Pied, in fact, is the ruiner of colors. So if you have pied, don't breed with it. Don't breed with it, unless you mix it with an albino. Because albino is the killer of all, all, all melanins and uh, pigments as well, all the lipochromes basically. So then you, if the bird is very nice and he's pied, then you try to find him an albino partner, the chicks will be carriers, but then you try to see what you have to do. Okay? So these are the three categories of mutations that we have, and we start with the formula that I created for understanding the mutations. So, like we were studying about x axes and y axes in mathematics, in science, in economics, in everything else. 
I call x-axis when it comes to these mutations as the location of the gene. And on that axis, I will have six length or autosome. Okay? And then the y-axis is the strength of that feature now. Is it dominant or is it recessive? Right? Let's take some examples. Who can tell me an example? And by the way, the naming always starts with x-axis, then y-axis, right? So, six-length dominant, six-length recessive, or autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive. I don't say recessive six-length. Six-length dominant, six-length recessive. Can I have an example of a six-length dominant trait mutation in golden finches? Lutino? Lutino. No. Redhead. Redhead. Excellent. I'll explain why Lutino, no. Can I now have an example of six length recessive? Eno. Which Eno? Blackhead. Lutino. This is here. Six length recessive, not dominant. I chose the blackhead example that you've given me. Can I also have an example of autosomal and recessive? Blue back. Blackhead is here. Yellow head. Excellent. And blue back, what you said is also correct. Can I have an example of dominant autosomal? Or autosomal dominant? No. Up to you. I accepted his blue back. I accepted his Lutino. Anything you know. We are only thinking loudly now. So yellow back is not autosomal. It's sixth linked. It's not related to autosomal meaning. What does autosomal mean? You don't know, then ask. Sorry? We're talking about inheritance. How does this mutation transfer from parents to the children? That's what we are talking about. Autosomal mean. Autosomal means it's got to be available in both parties, both parents. Alashan, it can be visible in there. It must be available in both. When it's autosomal dominant, one parent is enough to carry it to both. Visible, not split. This is why, to answer you, what you've answered correct, when you say purple breast, and you take a father or a mother that is purple breast, you give him a partner that is white breast, what will happen to the chicks? All purple breast. Split? White breast. I hope the autosomal story is clear now. Let's look at head mutations, and what we just did now is, is a good example for that. Okay, so what we have over here, we do have the classics, and then added to that is yellow tip beak. What does yellow tip beak tell you? Is a carrier of what? Yellow, yellow head. Okay. So, autosomal recessive is nothing but the orange head. Six length recessive is the black head. Six length dominant is the red head. Right? Breast mutations, and we have three colors. These are some live examples for you. Here, we see the purple. Here, we see the lilac. Here, we see the white. What do you think of the lilac? What do you think of these lilacs? Are they good lilacs? Or are they bad lilacs? Good lilacs, right? In a good lilac male, he will look like an excellent female. Lilac is nothing but 50% of the purple intensity. So you see the purple, you see the white, this is halfway. Halfway. Because some people get confused. What is lilac? 
and they bring a bird that is white with a very fine hint of purple and he calls it lilac well that's a bad lilac that's not a good lilac okay so when it comes to the breast white breast is autosomal recessive it's very weak this cannot be carrier of anything and then the lilac breast is basically halfway it is autosomal recessive to the purple but dominant to the white and the classic breast is always autosomal dominant living on females which one of these has lilac breast which ones this this yes okay this one what about this what about this and this okay rule of thumb no such thing as lilac breasted female the eyes of us human beings is not capable to distinguish this okay this is why in the show you never have lilac breasted females it's just a female okay we call her purple breast okay now let's talk about the green back series first the classics the classics are of course this one is yellow tip beak yeah this is all yellow tip beak red black orange and there you go here we have the purple breast lilac breast white breast all of this when i'm talking about the green back six length dominant okay then from there we talk about pastel green right we have several pictures and symbols whether it is single factor or double factor and of course the female is always single factor because she carries only one sex chromosome so for those of you who said pastel the inheritance here is six linked co-dominant co-dominant it works stronger than six linked recessive little bit weaker than six linked dominant so that's why even if you if you have a father who's pastel his daughters will be pastel but at least one of his sons also the second son will be split so this is the power of pastel compared to lutino lutino father will only give his daughters his sons will be split Lutino mother, she only gives the split sons, zero to the daughters, because she is recessive. Here we're talking about co-dominant. Now then comes the famous mutation, which is cinnamon. Some people call it Bruno. So cinnamon. The idea of the cinnamon here is, what does it do to the black? If orange oxidized red then here brown oxidizes the black this is exactly what's happening cinnamon plays a role only on the black in the bird so a bird you can see here brown you can see the flight feathers which are supposed to look black they are all brown you can see here it's brownish and this is a better example of black versus brown. You can see it's all brown here, of course here. And this is a female, but the lighting isn't great. But she's black. I saw this in person. She's marvelous. The lighting is not helping her. Is Bruno an official naming for cinnamon? No. Cinnamon is the official naming, OK? So when you call a bird, be official, be international, it's called cinnamon. Then we have Eno Green or Green Eno, which is Lutino. Lutino by the name, it basically diminishes the eomelanin, but it cannot harm, it cannot touch the lipochromes. So if I have red, it stays as red. 
If I have orange, it stays as orange. What happens to the black? It should go. But why do I not see white, perfect white here? Because he's a male. His feathers are longer. And there is air between the feathers. You take this, you pluck it, see it under the microscope, it's white. Okay? This is why a female is slightly different. So, how do I know a male from a female in this situation? I have tons of lutino. I don't know which is male, which is female. It's very easy. Look at the aqua band. All of these are males, except this one. Yeah, even this has a very fine line. You see this? It's big. This is very little, so potentially this, okay? So when we are dealing with Lutino, we see that the black disappears. But the Bruno or the cinnamon acts, and I'll show you that in a moment. By the way, out of the pigmentation, what do you think about this shape? Sorry? Fatty, yeah? Obese, is it a good bird to have? Do you like these kind of birds? Yes, no? <coughs> so this is not a good example of a show type bird. It's not what you should be aspiring for. Big fat, you see, it's like a chicken. This is why he may look nice. If this bird loses a lot of the fat, he will be slender, okay? And you could see, what did we say when we started this discussion with some of you? The head, does it have moisture? Does it have fat? No. So what happens? You have a body that is huge on a head that is not so proportional now. Because there is no chance for the fat to be here, right? So this is the truth of the bird. This is what the breeder is trying to show. As a judge, you learn, you see these things. Right, moving on now, we talk about the cinnamon eno. Just like the eno, the difference here is that everything black became brown. So, when I look, these are various examples. Of course, these are males, and this is the females. Again, your aqua headband, is your biggest, strongest indication of a male. No, see this? Very humble. Very humble. It's like a hint, almost not existent. Satini. Is this an official word? No. Cinnamon eno. Cinnamon eno. That's the right way. Is it eno cinnamon? No. Why? Because eno is stronger than cinnamon. So you start with a weaker name, cinnamon, eno. Okay, this is the international official language. Facebook, you will see a lot of stuff because it's coming from individuals who did not have the opportunity like you. You are now blessed with some knowledge. So spread it. Moving on, yeah. What's the problem? Uh, ethnic uh, head color is uh, very similar to the bird. How can we can elaborate? So, this is the result. Female, female. 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 No, in, in even even in females, this is a female, cinnamon. How can we elaborate uh, uh, between differentiate? Oh, oh dif okay. okay. Sorry, differentiate. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. Keep your eyes on her. Look at this. More brown. Much more brown. This is like toffee. This is like toffee. You know when you have like Spanish latte? It's like it's like toffee, you know the toffee we eat? It's like toffee. In reality, it's like bronze. 
You cannot mistake, no chance. This, this is very, very light. It's like cream. That's the difference. Can you separate with the help of fly feathers? Yeah. So basically, let's say, no, the flight feathers will be very humble. It's not a good marking. Don't go for the flight feathers. No. If you do that, you might fall into trap. Why? Because the bird itself might not have good colors. Then you want to help yourself, but then you get confused. <coughs> With the classic flight feathers, it's very easy. In this world, don't. Because here, they should be white. <coughs> here, <coughs> you see that? It's very difficult. <coughs> In reality, a very good bird should show a little bit, little bit brown. But it's very hard to achieve that level. So don't. Just look at the head only. That's your best way. Okay, are we good? Yes. Everybody's okay? Okay. Ask. Can we uh, make a you know, uh, mix of uh, any location? You need to have some cinnamon. It's not Bruno, it's cinnamon. You need to have cinnamon to start with. The, the, the problem is, or the gap that we have today, there is no formula that says to you start from somewhere to get something today. All what we are doing, we are living on the work of the guys before us. Very much like the people who started with a pastille or with a blue. In nature, you have the classic green, three colors, right? Just recently, two years ago, they started spotting in the wild blue. Blue golden finch in the wild because it's there in the genes, right? So how did the pastille start? They don't know. They don't know. All what they did, lots of inbreeding, lots of crossbreeding, so outbreeding. And then, how did the first cinnamon start? Nobody knows. How did the first blue start? No one knows. That's the issue not only with Goldians, with everything else. Because genetics is يعني, something very, very complex, to be very honest with you. I tried. I tried my level best. I'm a very technical person in my discipline. All my life, I've been studying. Uh, industrial engineering but when it comes to this world I sit and ask people from the field of genetics they can't answer they can get close but they cannot answer even for you and for me they don't know why is my skin like this you want to say that because I am from Bahrain no it's not we have white people there also so we don't know yeah <clears throat> So now we can talk a little bit about the comparison between green Eno and cinnamon Eno, and this will have the example for you as well. So, Zeb, so here um, we have females to come to your uh, example. So the way to compare is the head is the safest, best way. So you can see here, cream, bronze. It's very clear, the difference is very clear. Come on. And then when I look here at a bunch of more females, so they are all redhead in this case, and I can say here that I have enos, right? And then here, what happens to the black? It becomes brown, right? So that's my indication that this is cinnamon, the element of cinnamon. And then to that side, to the right-hand side, similar to this guy, this is the effect of the black here on the male. And then this is the effect of the black on the female. But then you can clearly see the brown there and the brown here. Even then in the hen, it's lighter. Because what we said about the feather length in the hen, shorter, shorter. And then similar to those ladies, we have these gents. And you can see the aqua band being very strong. To recap on the green back and then we take a break, short break.
I have a classic bird here and then what happened for it to be a pastille? What went with this bird? What happened? What was missing? Eomelanin by 50%. And then I go to this level. What happened? Almost 100%. Almost 100%. Not 100, almost 100%. Okay? So the question is caused by the absence of which melanin pigmentation? Eomelanin. Okay? What happened here? Why is this bird having a wide breast? What's missing? Okay, pheomelanin. So all of this becomes white. What else is missing that caused this bird to look pastel green? Very good, excellent. Aeomelanin and pheomelanin both went missing. This is why the bird has evolved to be pastel and even eno. Even eno. Yes. Okay? So this, yes, sir. No, this is a variation. To me, this is a the good bird. No, no, no. Which one? The, the this one? Yes. No, that's what I'm saying. So you compare this with that. This is the good bird. Both are single factors. Yeah. So what you have here, both are single factors. But as I said before, if you don't have a good classic, what happens? This happens. Uh, in, ter in terms of colors, yes. I wouldn't prefer him. I see him as not optimal. What is the good bird? That's how the good bird should color look like. Okay? Right, so we covered quite a lot so far. We went through a big journey and the next I have up is blue series. I think it's good to take a short break, buy a break, drink something, and then we will continue. So maybe five minutes is okay enough for everyone. Workshop 2023, Pat Gouldian's Club, part three, season one. Workshop 2023 PGC, coming on next week.